while we were under cost or under commercial there, we had to fix a technical difficulty. Matt Hoos took a big hit onto the front straight with wall. And we've had a small big one here early on. Hoos got upside down and a few other drivers involved. Ronald Henry, William Roberts, Sean Medling, uh, Anthony Burns, Brad Lam uh, Brian Lambert, a bunch of drivers involved there. All of them are okay. James Ross has pulled it behind the wall and Peyton Powell has pulled it behind the wall. But caution out for the first time here tonight at Daytona International Speedway. Yeah, we, we saw the front pack there break out a little bit. The top four guys really spread out and uh, kind of walked away from the field a little bit. But that pack behind was uh, pretty big there, and they were able to hold their own for, for a little while. But uh, I really think you need to be lined up single file in order to get the run on these guys. They're really going to have to tan them and work together. And uh, looks like we're going to have some leaders coming down pit road. Fuel is going to be a problem. you got to get gas. These guys are going to be running low on it. Justin, you're going to pack up fuel with Sunoco Racing Fuel? Oh, yeah. That's what I'm going to do. They want to get, uh, keep their strategies right now. Uh, probably no tires. I'm not allowed to steer in the back. So, yep, only fuel. David Washington overran his pit stop there. I know you were down on the other side of the pits, Justin. Fuel for all the drivers down here, right side on some of them. But what a crack out. Yeah, he lost, oh, what, three, two, three positions there. Could have walked out with a second, could have rolled out with a second, third or fourth down. Let the scoring all get to the back here. And, and get you a Updated lineup. There we go. Finally got it out. Updated lineup here in just a moment. Working lap number eight under our first caution here after a vicious crash involving Matt Hoos and a few others down the front straightaway. Good news is all those drivers are okay. Uh, we're going to let the we're going to let the um, field run back around here, and we'll get you an updated on the scoring. Right now, it's showing me David Washington in the lead. We know that's not correct because he slid through his pit stall. We have a bunch of drivers not even coming down pit road there, so this is really going to shake up the field here in the early going. Taking a look, it may be Bruce Lawson leading the field to green here after everything cycles through. David Washington could be put back as far as 10, maybe even further back as well as Chad Simpson. All right, here we go. We're going to get the scoring updated. Chad Simpson up there in the front. He's going to come out seventh row, eighth in Washington, ninth. Uh, but Bruce Lawson, like you said, Zane, will be leader. Brian Terry, Harry Dodd, Andy Carpenter, and Roy Carpenter uh, rounds out the top five. But you know what? We're, we're talking about David Washington falling back to ninth here after this set of pit stop. David Washington is that silent thunder in a race. You don't hear from him at all until the last 15, 10 laps, and then boom, there he is, winning the race. Yeah, David Washington, he is a champion in multiple divisions here at Noble Motorsports, and he is really, he really knows how to drive. He really knows what to do, when to do it, and how to do it. And in a place like here, you have to know when to do it, how to do it, where, where to do it. Um, Look for Washington to kind of, I think he was trying to get out in front there and just get out ahead of all the madness, but now since he's back in the pack, look for him just to be silent, back here riding around. A and little hard to ride around when they're two, three wide around you. Not true that, but you just have to, have to ride it out to the best of your ability, and uh, we'll just have to see what Washington has in store for us here in the next few laps. Uh, but I'm pretty sure he'll be up there around the lead at the end of the right, right now he's kind of out of the eye of the tornado 
He's sitting about ninth, but if he drops back any further, he's going to be in the danger zone. So hopefully, let's see if he can get up to the top five, stay with that pack. But any further than that, I'm afraid for him. 31 cars still on the lead lap here at Daytona International Speedway. <laughs> and that is a huge, huge field here for the Noble Motorsports Cup Series. Round number one at Daytona. Oh, the big bad Daytona at that has been. Daytona International Speedway, no other way to start the season off better than this. Lights are off on the iRacing.com Ford Mustang pace car. That means this time, next time I should say, we are going to get the green flag and we will be racing once again here at Daytona. We'll see how aggressive these guys want to be. We're still only 10 laps into this race and uh, we already seen one accident. So we'll see if these guys can uh, hold their own here, hold their line, stay in the pack here. Wide, but these guys are the professionals, so I'm sure they can do it. Uh, we'll, we'll be uh, wanting to see how anxious some of these guys are here in the race. We'll get it's the good. green flag. We will have 50 laps to go. <laughs> plenty of time for plenty of things to happen, especially at Daytona. Bruce Lawson will lead them back to the green flag and to his outside, Brian Terry in the 92. Terry looking to have a good year this year. Or good season. This season, I should say. Uh, update you on some other drivers. Matt Hoos, they have now officially retired his car. Uh, after the vicious, wild crash he had on the front straightaway. I want to apologize for technical difficulties earlier on. But uh, we're going to be live with you here. Not going to be a Super Bowl event. We're, we're, we're live for the rest of the way here at Daytona International Speedway. Lights are off as the exit corner number four. Bruce Lawson, Ryan Terry. Pace cars down pit road. Lawson looking for the perfect time to fire. He's going to find it all about right now. There he goes. Green flag. We're back in the air. Uh, green flag is back in the air. We're racing. Had that That's a really good start right there, Ben. Side by side. Wow. Terry almost knew when he was going, and Terry got a really good start. Like he said, they're starting to bunch up, though, behind them. This has been interesting. Two by two by two. Back straight away, heading into corner number three. A few drivers, a little bobble and a wiggle as they head through three and four. The four car almost up into the wall. Everybody oh, able? Three wide back. Yeah, almost three wide. Everybody able to make it through the first lap on the restart here, though. And that inside line looks like it's really starting to work because there goes Harry Dodd and Bruce Lawson right now pulling away to the lead. But watch out, because here comes Brian Terry, Andy Carpenter, Roy Carpenter, Chad practically from. Good, good number on that car back there. I do believe that might have been Andy Carpenter. They got into the wall. Corner number two or in, in turn two. Look on this inside, though. Look who has found uh, his guy, David Washington and Chad Simpson. They're going to try and start working their way back up to the field. They're going to be in the top five as we complete the uh, lap number 12. I guess the sit back and wait strategy wasn't in the book. I'll get back up front. Up front's where it's at. Talking to David Washington last night after final practice here at Daytona, he said these cars 
real challenging to drive, they're real trying. You can't hit the guy, you can't push on their right rear, or it'll turn them straight into the wall with a new drafting back that we have here. He said it's a challenge, but it makes it fun because you, you, you got to know your limits. you got to know what you can and can't do. And you see all the drivers trying to stay to the left side, not get too far over on that right side of the rear bumper on these cars. you got to wonder if now with David Washington, you gotta wonder how many of these guys are here, how many are trying to switch. I just see the pack start to check up a little bit. Harry Dodd had that thing almost pointed at the inside wall through one and two, and everybody's starting to bunch up now as they head down into corner number three, Andrew Carpenter, uh, Andy Carpenter, excuse me, making some uh, evasive moves right there to get around some cars. That's got exciting. So now Washington and Simpson are back in the middle of the pack yet again. Right, here comes Brian Perry on the outside trying to get the lead. Trying to get it again. Got him. Terry being pushed by the four car of Anthony Burns. Here comes that inside line. Moving again. Back up front for Brian Perry wants his effort. by two, by two, by two, the field as they head down the back straight away. Leaders battling side by side for the lead. It's Terry at one point, and then it's Lawson, then it's back to Terry, and then it's back to Lawson again. Corner number four, it looks like Carpenter and Lawson get hooked up real good as they head across the strike. And now you got to watch out for Anthony Burns as he slips to the inside, leaving Brian Terry all alone. Wait, he's got something else. He's got something else. There's the 85 of Dylan Rowe trying to help Ryan Perry on that outside line. We'll have to see if those two can get hooked together and head to the front. They're moving. They're moving. There's Rowe and Perry on the outside. Choo-choo. Rowe pushed Terry, took the lead down the front straight away for the tri-oval. They have pulled a five car link lead over the whole pack behind them, the snarling pack behind them. Eric Galleripa, he's on the inside, he needs to get below the open. Watch out as we head down the back straight away. They didn't catch that, glad you saw it, man. Rowe and Perry still have to lose, but they kind of yeah, lost their big momentum that they had. Back behind Rowe and Perry, we have Dylan C. Jones and Philip Willis. Watch out for Philip Willis. He knows how to drive these cars, and he'll put it up front in a heartbeat as well. Willis, well Philip Willis, the previous champion of Noble, he definitely knows how to wheel these cars to get a victory. Watch out, man, because he's been quiet with this race. Switch for the lead, puts Rowe in front of Terry, and now look at Dylan Jones, the other back straight away with pushing help from Philip Willis. You see the switch out from Terry, Dylan Rowe right there, kind of stuck up, uh, stacked up the back, the outside lane. Too much action going on, tongue-tied. Look at this, and everybody can't break down the foot straight away, what a save! Wow! That was a very... 36 of Bruce Lawson thought there was a hole there, there wasn't, and he had that thing almost pointed at the inside wall. Wow. Right, that just shows the talent. Well, that traffic. Lap traffic. I couldn't get a number on him or see who it was, but they are able to clear him down the back straightaway. I think that was. Uh, I can even tell Ronald Henry back there. That's a lap traffic, but look at Dylan Rowe and Philip Willis. Willis pulled right up in front of Rowe, and Rowe says, Oh, your bumper looks good. Let me push it. Any number looks good to push Daytona until the last lap, buddy. 
last lap is 40 laps away. Now Rowe's going to go to the inside of uh, Willow. They're going to be pulling off the switch. they got to get lined back up though quick because here comes uh, Brian Perry being pushed by Mitch Lennon. And they're coming. They're coming fast on the outside. Terry, Rose, side by side, and then we have Lennon and Willis, they're side by side. The pack starting this group back together here in Daytona. Oh, by the way, oh, to the lead, Terry, over there was catch. What I was about to say, though, wow, that's a what I was about to say, David Washington looked to him. He's third on that outside line. Good back racing here. This is answering Andy's question about whether the two-car tandem or pack racing. I think we're seeing pack racing and two-car tandem. Wow, look at Lennon. He leaves Terry out to try. And now Washington's pushing Lennon. We've got lap traffic ahead of them with all this crazy action going on. That's Brian Lambert at the 51. Oh boy, hang on. It's going to get tight off of corner number two. Oh, and a big crash. Terry in the wall. Coops goes around. Is it going to be a two-car incident? No, a few other cars. Terry Don. Roy Carpenter involved in this second accident of the night. And, oh my. Wow. We're going to get a replay for us, you guys, right now. But, Zane and Andy, let's go ahead and confirm. This is no one's fault. Uh, I mean, it's the racing instrument you have a car still 200 miles per hour opposed to a car going 175. There's bound to be something happening. Oh. Yeah, and I talked about it. Outside there, it bundles up a little bit coming out of the turn two, and just you watch Brian Terry just kind of ride up in there, and just no room, nowhere to go. After watching that replay, we are really lucky we have all the cars left that we do. That could have been a whole lot bigger than it was. So, give a round of applause to all the drivers that avoided that mayhem occur down on the back straightaway. I was looking through the field. Look, uh, back in 16th, Brian Likens in the 48. He's going to be down on pit road with us tomorrow in the Noble uh, Michelangelo Painting Truck Series. Looking forward to having Brian jump on board. Mid stops about to occur. Mitch Lennon leads over David Washington and Anthony Burns as they head down in. We'll see if we can get some drivers here. A driver uh, on the pull up, pulled up on the radio. Ugh, I get tongue tied. Pulled up on the radio here after these pit stops occur. It's all the last time. Way to be as fast down on this way. He's going to head out and he's back. He will be back. He's going to run up. I like it. He's going to not take a picture. A little bit of strategy on Brian Lankin's part. Get some laps here, maybe. You know, this championship gets the points. It's a free lap. Rodney Kramer is right behind Brian Lankin's as well as Eric Valariva. Both those drivers are multiple laps down. So, 
We'll see if we can't uh, get you lined up uh, with the scoring here, get everything sorted out with that, let you guys know who's who and where they are. I do know David Washington will be at least on the front row. We'll have to see if Brian Likens pits here. Uh, but I'm, I'm, I don't know, Zane, if that was a pitch strategy there or if he's going to try and stay out and lead this thing. I would say a little bit of both. It's Daytona. Why not go out with a little bit of strategy and lead a couple laps at the same time? We're bound to see another caution happen. It's early in the race, and it's Daytona. We're, it's going to happen. We, we know it is. Looks like he's going to stay out this time. Brian Likens staying out. Eric Malariva going to come down. Rodney Kramer's heading down pit road, but uh, let's see if our radio's working tonight. Brian Likens, Ben Kilcrease, up here in the Noble TV booth. You got us? I got you. Brian, uh, maybe a little strategy staying out on this pit stop. Are you going to lead him back to the line? Uh, actually, no strategy there. Just wanted to stay out of the big mess there on pit road. I figured I'd go ahead and ride up the pace laps. I took a little gas, took all four tires the last time I was in the pit, so... I'm just going to ride in the back, you know, sort of play it out. I narrowly dodged the wreck there uh, about five or six laps ago. But uh, like I said, I'm going to ride in the back, see if I can uh, keep the nose out of trouble. Sounds good. Brian, speaking of pit road, it was uh, busy in this round of pit stops. You're going to be on pit road tomorrow for the no bull trucks. Uh, glad to have you back on down pit road. Yeah, hopefully I uh, hopefully I can keep the fingers on it tonight, and I won't end up with uh, shell shock in pits tomorrow, diving behind pit boxes every time I hear an engine fire up. So, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll see what I can do about not knocking myself stupid tonight. <laughs> All right, Brian, we'll put it in victory lane for us, and I wish you the best of luck in uh, the rest of the race. That's it for it. Thank you, sir. I'll do my best, and uh, I'd like to thank Noble Motorsports for making this all possible. I'd like to thank you guys for broadcasting it, and I will see you all tomorrow night. Sounds great. Brian Lichen in the 4-8 car, currently leading the field here at Daytona International Speedway. I want to go ahead and correct myself. I just noticed uh, I had on my memo the 6 actually looks like an 8 on my notebook. I said 80 laps. We're running 60 laps here tonight, so just in case any of you were confused. We're almost at halfway point. Uh, we will be, we'll be, uh, blah, blah, we will be competing, completing lap 25 this time and should be getting the lights off here pretty soon. All right, so let's see. You, you, we, got, we got bad notes because of my chicken scratch third grader handwriting. <laughs> we, we had the power go out almost because Bain tried to stop the race and I had to foil him. What else is gonna happen tonight? I don't know, we, we've, yet, we've yet to have the, the very, very big one and we've yet to have a good, really close finish here in a while here at TS, uh, no bull TV, excuse me. Um, so maybe we, we'll see, we'll see a good finish and, uh, it'll be, it'll be good, good stuff happening here in the later run. I'm, I'm hoping maybe we see a long green flag run and we get some green flag pit stops here because that's when the action happens. Blowing these things up, like Andy said, from 100, 200, 90, uh, 200 to 190 miles an hour to 55, it's going to be exciting. Yeah, these guys, are, uh, <laughs> these guys put on a heck of a show every time we come to Daytona, so I, you know what I expect? I expect to see a damn good race for the rest of this time here, 35 laps to go. So, I, man, it's just, uh, let's sit back and let's enjoy this one. David Washington, you see him running down on the apron? That's a champion for you there, saving gas. Getting ready for a long run. Will we see a long run? We'll have 34 laps to go when we get the green flag. Lights are off. They're not doubling up just quite. Well, as soon as I say that, they start doubling up. So, Phil starting to double up. It'll be David Washington and Dylan Rowe on the front row. And then we have Mitch Lennon and Anthony Bar uh, Burns. And then we have Philip Willis. So, see right now is if, if David Washington and Dylan Rowe are going to hook up because Dylan Rowe has been one heck of a pusher all night so we may feel the strategy work out I have to wait and see oh about 800 900 feet away from getting a green flag yeah, I want to give a big here. shout out to uh, 
Sean Medley there really on Levins right now. Thought he would help Rex. Sean started in the back. Pace car is down. We'll talk about him later. Green flag back in the air. Washington gets a good start. Lennon already right there on the rear bumper of David Washington. Getting ready to push him out for the lead. Watch Washington and Lennon. They're going to get a huge lead as they head onto the back straightaway. Row being left out to dry. And it's Philip Lewis and Chad Simpson hooked up. Excuse me, that's uh, Dylan Jones. Sorry about that. Anthony Burns and then Chad Simpson starts to lead somewhat of a small pack. And now what I want to see right here is what's going to happen with Dylan Rowe. Is Philip Lewis going to work with them or are they going to kind of swing up to the outside and pick it up and dry on the inside there? If you're not careful, it will be back to pack racing up front. Looked like Jones was just ready to push uh, Willis around Rowe there. Rowe being left out to dry on the high side, down the back straightaway, yep, not going to be able to slide in front of Burns either, so he continues to fall back. Rowe is one to get down to that inside line, and sadly, it's bad. Look at the swing of the car down. Give me a hold, give me a hold. All the way up front, two tandems of two, and now, oh, Philip Willis thought they had a good run. He pulled out to the high side. Jones wasn't ready to go with him, and they got simply to them. Tandems up front, trying to get work away from that pack. I don't blame him. I wouldn't. I don't think I'm going to be in the middle of that either. I think I'd uh, end up causing a big wreck. That's why we're up. <laughs> yeah, there you go. I think there's Bane. I think Bane always has his fire suit on his broadcast. <laughs> I brought my helmet just in case for a Daytona this weekend. Mitch Lennon continues to push David Washington. You have to wonder if these guys will have to switch here in the next few laps or so. Meanwhile, while those guys or those six guys have been running tail to nose, Chad Simpson, uh, nope, excuse me, that's Brian Neff. And Dylan Rowe have pulled up, and they're going to try and make that high side work around Daytona. Looking out of the rear of David Washington, as you can see that high side starting to form. Willis pulls up the track. Willis! He's going to slide down in front of Washington. Does he have room? No. Brian Neff going to get back on the rear bumper. Side by side for the lead. Off the corner number four. He almost turns it. Neff and Willis, they almost got hooked together and almost into the catastrophe. Now, hello, we're back to pack racing. Now, really? Guys A bunch of different types of racing here at Daytona so far today. Tandem and pack racing all around the track. Just at uh, not, not at the beginning of the run, not at the end of the run. We'll pack racing. Sometimes we'll see tandem racing. But now, Willis and Neff on the high side. Washington and Lennon on the low side. Willis is going to lead that. 
200 miles per hour as they head down and dive down in the corner of the north. Great Galarupa will be a lap car here in the next two laps or so that they're going to have to worry about. Who's going to go ahead and slow down to the agent? Good job, Eric. Washington and Lennon, they get a good run through three and four. High side is good. He's cut for them that time. Look at Sean meddling back in the back of the pack. He's going to go three wide up the corner of the four. He gets into the wall. Look at he made it three wide as well down the front straightaway. And this track, we mentioned it earlier, Andy, so narrow, real hard to get three wide. I mean, two wide here, much less three wide. Three wide is really close, but it makes it exciting. Philip Willis pulled down in front of David Washington. Willis said, hey, I'll try the inside line. Who are you guys? Now I pulled the high side enough. Still, good time racing going on here. Rock Henry will be the next black car to go with them to the uh, pack here. So that time to try uh, laughing Henry. It was... Uh, he was going to do the and carry that to the side of him. And we had a small incident down the back straightaway. To the front straightaway, they're catching him fast. They're catching him real fast. They're going to have to pass him on the high side in one of the tightest spots on the track. Be careful as you head down into corner number one. Wow, I got a real tough spot. Oh, that has happened. Philip Willis and David Washington said, uh, what's that pack racing we hear you guys talking about? We're going to try some fandom up front. Six. He got sideways off at corner number four, had to save it, went three wide there. That was a good save by him. Whoa, and Burns in the four car almost got him from the lead. Coons in the 77 as they had three turns on the one two. Coons got one down the back straightaway. It would be incident with the lat car on Henry. And now Coons is up there battling almost in the top five. That's one heck of a driver. Ryan Neff, Bob Neff to the lead. Neff got the lead that lap, but now Philip Willis starting to pull back down or pull back away on the winning side. Side by side for the lead. It's Neff and Rowe on the high side, Willis and Washington on the inside. Rowe and Neff get hooked up. They're going to go to the lead. No, Rowe goes slow. He left Neff to dry there. He left Neff to dry. Now Malik Coons looking to make a three wide off the corner number four. They're side by side. Three wide. Sean Medley almost gets into the... Who was that? Brad and Spidell. Oh, trouble. Sean Medley gets into it. Trouble down the first round with a big right. crash. Huge. Huge wreck. Sean meddling upside down. Oh, poor Sean meddling upside. Looks like Ricky Howell Jr. got the We're gonna go to the
Yeah, it just got, looking at the replay, Ben, and it, it just got real tight with that three wide, and really nothing you can do. It just... <laughs> Come a ton of damage from a lot of cars here. It's going to be interesting to watch them on pit road because I know Justin will be running around here in a moment. But a lot of cars are going to be heading down pit road with tons and tons and tons of damage here. What do you say, Justin? Do you see anything out of Sean Medling down there? They got a lot of damage to fix on that car, or what? Oh yeah, the crew reported that there's a lot more damage than they expected. It's going to be tough for them to get back on the track. We'll see. They're working on it right now. Yeah, I know. A lot, lots and lots and lots of damage there in that, that accident there on the front stretch. Nothing we can do about it, though. I'm telling you, it's just it's real narrow on this track. It's not like Talladega. like Dylan Rowe is coming down real at 55 miles per hour, uh, like everyone else. He, look, he might be only taking uh, fuel only to keep first place. And that's, that's what it looks like right now. Yeah, it has been a strategy. We'll see these guys. It looks like he's going to a quick commercial here at Noble TV. Uh, I gotta get some new batteries for my headset. <laughs> so, back here at Daytona International Speedway. TV at Daytona International Speedway serving yet again another caution after a huge incident on the front straightaway uh, after three wide yet again biting some people in the butt just completing lap 41 we have just under 20 laps to go here at Daytona International Speedway Zane still under 20 laps to go but when is your go time uh, to start heading out and trying to get up to the lead. For me personally, it depends on where I'm at in the pack. If I'm sitting within the top 10, top 15, probably 15, 11 laps to go, start making my way up. Five laps to go, I'm making my way to the top five. Within three to two to go, I'm making my way to the lead. If I'm back in the top 20, I'm making my way to go within 15 laps to go. I gotta get to the top five, top 10 within the last five laps or I'm bowing for the rest of the race. So those guys sitting back there right now, it may be their go time here, but we'll start seeing these guys start to click off those laps in the next, uh, with 15, 10 to go, we'll start seeing them get three wide maybe and start really pushing the issue. Still have not got the lights off on the pace car, a bunch of debris on the front straightaway, but Andy, 
Chapman. We heard Zane. When is your go time here at the restricted plate race if you are down behind that wheel? Well, if I'm down behind the wheel, my go time would be dependent on where I am in the field. If I'm out in the back, you gotta you gotta start making your move with, I would say at least 10 or 15 to go because you gotta start picking them away, but you gotta be careful. Uh, you don't want to put yourself or other people in jeopardy uh, trying to win this thing with 15 to go. But if you're up front, you pretty much just want to hug that bottom line and stay with that guy that's in front of you and uh, and wait to wait till the end, wait till the last two or three laps and try to settle this thing out in the final quarter. Cannot wait to the last lap. White flag lap always exciting here at Daytona. Let's go ahead and update you on the running order. Dylan Rowe will lead them off, followed by David Washington, Philip Willis, Malik Coons has made it back to the top four. Philip Willis just went up fifth, so he will not be third. That'll bump Malik Coons up to third. So Coons will be third. Neff will be fourth, and Mitch Lennon will be uh, rolling off fifth. We really, or I am really impressed at uh, Malik Coons able to bounce back after being in that incident on the front straightaway, being able to bounce back, and now he's going to be lining up third here with just under 20 laps to go. Yeah, that's a real surprise. That is Daytona, though. Anything can happen. You can spin out in the first two laps, but you can end up winning it in the end. Like, like I said before, these guys are just, uh, these guys are the top of the line guys here at Noble, and uh, a little spin like that's not going to keep the league from a chance to win, I'll tell you that. Hey, what, while we're still under this caution, let's uh, talk about the Noble Trucks tomorrow. Uh, it's going to be Zane, Andy, and I up at the booth, and Brian Lykin, I mentioned him earlier, will be down on pit road it's nice to have brian come back uh, on board and then going to take a day off on wednesday to do pit stop and then on thursday we return back here at noble tv to broadcast the power tech power solutions nationwide series where wayne finley will be joining us back and uh andy's real nice to have brian come back and real nice to have andy, uh, andy come back it's real nice to have wayne come back and uh, want to be a part of the uh, broadcast back uh, here at Noble TV. Yeah, it is really good to have those guys back. Uh, the more the merrier, uh, the much easier it is to, to do this well for everybody. So, yeah, it's a great thing to have these guys back. And uh, I'm ready to get back racing, Ben. I don't know about you. I am, too. We are ready to go back racing, by the way. Nationwide TV here Thursday. So we're not going to Daytona on for the week. We've still got, oh, under 20 laps to go on this one. Dylan Rowe, David Washington, front row, green flag. We're back racing here for the uh, 17 laps to go. Washington did not get off the line real good, but he was able to slide in between Rowe and Koontz. And not more tell the nose. Get behind row and just push their way up. Uh, Straight away, David Washington starting to get hooked up with Dylan Rowe. Brian Neff starting to push Malik Koontz. Look at the high side. That is the four car of Anthony Burns and Brad Spidell on the 76. Looked like Brad Spidell gave the wall a little bit of a love kiss in the middle, a love tap there in between three and four. Starting to use that side draft. You see him sinking down the side line down the front straightaway. Side draft key here. Just as much as a straight line draft as we uh, head through one and two down to the back straightaway. Dylan Rowe and Dave Washington pull about a three, four car lead. Mitch Lennon pulls up the side. Washington is uh, row of these cars back in the Right behind them, you have a pack of cars, a slew of cars, 
starting to get double files, starting to start packing up. No, just said packing up. Starting to get back to the pack here at Daytona. Yeah, with, 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 with 15 laps to go, man, these guys, I think, are really just trying to, it's like a big chess game. They're trying to make their move, be real cautious, but get in that right spot where they want to be for that, that close of two laps. Chest at 200 miles an hour, Andy. It's the best kind of chest there is. Watch it down the front straightaway. Look at Mitch Lennon. He gets a good jump on the outside. He's up there by himself. Washington and Rowe got uh, tangled. They're not tangled, but they got separated. And it uh up the field. And Mitch Lennon said, oh, look, there's the outside. I'll go for it. And now he's going to have draft and help the Andy Carpenter. They head down the back straightaway. David Washington pulls up the track. He leads Rowe to the uh, Yeah. Leaves Rowe to hang out the dry on the inside. Part of the nice front. some laps so I'm not surprised that he jumped up there to grab him here in the closing laps. About three months ago we were tandeming pack racing here yet again. We're gonna see it happen again here. He got about to go this time by the Rodney Frank slowing on down the eight battling it out for the win now there's no looking back high sign just followed up just a little bit here comes Malik Koontz pushing Dylan Rose for the lead watch out because there's David Washington on the outside with Mitch Lennon they're going to make it work for him nobody can work side by side great racing here at Daytona by the way Miles per hour. That's it? That's it. That's all it is. Washington, they get a good run down the back straightaway. Washington takes the throw down to the lead. Can they lead this lap? Can Washington get to the front and lead this lap? Poot kind of fall or fell off the rear end of road there. Took the front straightaway. Lennon and Washington get a good push off of corner number four. They might be able to clear road and can turn to the one. David Washington, Mitch Lennon, sorry about that thing. They moved down to the bottom. Malik Koontz was sideways to the trial. It was saved by him. But now Washington and Lennon lead the inside line. I think the inside line is going to be the line that's going to win this race. Right away, look at uh, Andrew Carpenter being pushed by Dylan Jones. Carpenter led that lap, and now just as Andy says, the low line's got to work. Whoa, Carpenter pulls right down in front of Washington. So that's going to bunch the field back up. Caution flag is out here at Daytona International Speedway of trying to figure out what happened. Uh, by the way, uh, at the top of your screen there on the ticker, caution is wrong. Let's get into that. Marcus Miller was involved in the accident. Oh, Philip Willis and Brian Perry, they get into it down the front straightaway. Wow, oh, what a big hit by Marcus Miller. So caution out again. Sorry we didn't see that. We were watching the battle for the lead up front and not paying attention to the back of the pack. But caution out again and this time we'll get the green flag with Flint. Ben to go. Gonna be everybody to go time now, Ben. It is going to be 
going to be good. I'm going to put it that way. It's going to get interesting. Now we'll get the green flag good. with, yeah, we're going to get the green flag with probably five or so laps to go. We have to wonder if anybody's going to come down pit road. I have to give a shout out to Andy Carpenter. He stayed quiet. He's been, he's had his share of uh, exciting moments. He was sideways at one point, three wide at another. He is now leading this thing with David Washington, reigning champion, in second. Dylan Jones, haven't really talked much about him, but he's been up there. Chad Osborne, where did he come from? He has now worked his way into the top five. And then Mitch Lennon, who's been all sneaking around the front all day long. Wait, wait, did you say Chad Osborne? Is he in the race tonight? Where did he come from? <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Chad Osborne worked his way back, has worked his way back up to fifth. And, uh, oh, excuse me, fourth. I, I just, like you said, we haven't even heard anything out of him tonight. He's up here contending for the lead now. We're going to take a quick commercial break. We'll be right back here at No Bull TV to bring you to the end of the race. There is no way to avoid a ticket if you don't use your seatbelt. Cops are stepping up enforcement and looking for unbuckled drivers like never before. If you don't buckle up, you will get stuck with a ticket. Click it or ticket. We are back here at Daytona International Speedway with Noble TV. Andy Kessler, Zane Lovenson, Kilcrease in the booth. Matt Weisbrook getting the picture that you see to you, Justin Munsell. Now I'm on pit road. We're not quite done here, though. We still got just less than 10 laps to go here in this one. Yeah, seven to go when they hit the stripe this time by, and probably looking about four green flag laps or so when they uh, when they get the green flag, and uh, it's going to be quite a little shootout here to the end. Got to wonder. You said it. No. You said it there, Andy. It's going to be a shootout, man. A shootout at Daytona. Four laps, you said. I think it's all going to go down in three. Got to wonder. Really, here in iRacing, since they don't have green white checkers, I hope some iRacing representative is listening to me, but they don't have green white checkers, so if the caution comes out within five or so laps to go, this race is done. So, you have to have that in the back of your mind, trying to get to the front here in the closing last but you also have, have in the back of your mind that if you cause a caution, all the other guys won't be able to race it to the end. But I'm pretty sure the No Bull Cup guys will be able to get it in the line, race it to the end, have a good finish. At least I'm hoping so, because I hate to see a race bend under yellow. Especially yeah. at Daytona. No, I Especially at Daytona's right, and it's the first race of the season. Everybody's got the jitters going. You're at this high-speed track. The meat and the potatoes of the season comes next week, and that's when you'll see these guys, uh, the cream rise to the crop, and you'll see some of these uh, faster guys, and you won't see these huge, huge wrecks like we saw tonight. Two to go until we get the green flag. Uh, about a one and a half laps now. Let's get ready to head back out onto the back straightaway. Tell you what, though, Team Explosion TV and No Bull Motorsports have come together and we formed No Bull TV to broadcast No Bull Motorsports races. Check out Team Explosion TV at TeamExplosionTV.com. We are pretty busy over there at Team Explosion TV, of course, doing the No Bull TV stuff here. Uh, we've jumped on with Danny Hanson, DWC driver, for a few races, as well as a bunch of other sponsorship deals we've signed on in the uh, last few weeks here, you can read all that on our homepage. NoBullMotorsports.com, great to find the NoBull Motorsports guys. Pretty much, though, I think all the series are filled up, and I can see why. Good racing will bring back guys uh, week after week after week. Ten race seasons for the Cup. 
the truck and the nationwide all broadcasting live here on Bluebird TV. And uh, only week one, we had the first round of the trucks last week, Andy, and boy, was it a good race at Atlanta Motor Speedway. Good race is uh, not even the right word. I mean, I thought we all thought we were at Talladega or Daytona with all the pump draft in it. I mean, we ran, we ran caution free at that race. Unbelievable race by all them guys in the trucks. And, uh, man, I, if that's any indication of the trucks here, man, I'd definitely tune in tomorrow night. Trucks will be at New Hampshire Motor Speedway tomorrow night. So we all that intermediate tracks. We saw the short track, but uh, we've done a few cup races. Uh, Noble at the, at the uh, Magic Mile up there in New Hampshire. They've been exciting, so I'm pretty sure the trucks are going to bring a heck of a race. Tomorrow night, you catch that rolling off of around 8.50 Eastern. Getting in my ear that iRacing servers are not being too cooperative with us right now. If you're seeing a lag on your screen, that's why iRacing not being the best uh, that it should be right now. We're all experiencing, some, uh, experiencing, experiencing a small little lag, so hopefully the iRacing servers kick back in and uh, straighten that out for the remainder of this one. Meanwhile, though, yeah, as I mentioned it in my ear, that's what you, uh, you can see the cars blink on your screen. We've seen quite a bit of that tonight. That is uh, from the iRacing consumers not being to the best of their ability. But meanwhile, it will be five laps to go when we get the green flag. What was that bit? The pace car. Uh, five laps to go at the Dolan International Speedway. The iRacing.com Ford Mustang pace car getting ready to pull down on the pit road. Andy Carpenter, David Washington, they just make up the front row and though we have about 20 or so behind them that can still win this thing. Who's gonna come out on top? But the final lap, Andy Carpenter fires for green flag racing with five to go. Carpenter got a good jump off the line and now David Washington and Dylan Jones are battling side by side. Chad Osborne trying to pull up to the rear bumper of David Washington. It is go time here at Daytona. We're going to see what's going to happen here. They line up single file coming out of one. Going for one up, two down, one up back. Who's that sticking up on the outside right now? David Washington jumped to the high side. Well, he almost steps off. Uh, Chad Osborne there. Washington has help from Dylan Rowe now as they head through three and four. Lennon and Osborne, they both move up the track. It's getting a little bit squirrely. David Washington goes around right higher to the wall. Crashing out. Dylan Rowe involved. And oh, they're still crashing. Christopher Sircoy upside down. And a vicious crash. Oh, and cars on pit road. This is, that was not a pretty crash. Oh, that's a heartbreaker too for uh, David Washington. Last season's champ. David Washington sitting backwards on the track and now he's back down on pit road not the way to start off and we go on board with Bill and Will and watch this crazy ride to the trial yeah, unfortunately man that, you know you knew, you knew something like that could happen here at Daytona Late race, everybody pushing, going for that win, fighting for every little inch of real estate they could possibly get. And, uh, man, it's unfortunate, but it uh, looks like this one's going to end under caution. And uh, I think Andy Carpenter is uh, pretty happy right now. We got it. We can't, we, can't, we can't debate on it real quick, but Mitch, well, can't debate on the ending of this, so it might get green with one to go. We hope that happens, but it... That all started when Mitch Lennon and Chad Osborne, I'm not blaming them, but it all started when Mitch Lennon and Chad Osborne stepped out to the high side. Washington had to check up. Rowe got into the back of him, turned him sideways. 
Washington did the best he could to save it, but just oh, yeah. just did it, not chess. pull it off. We we talked about it earlier, Ben. It's chess at 200 miles an hour. The, yep. We watched them sneak out to the outside, try to get up front, try to get the lead. The outside line stuck up a little bit and or stacked up a little bit, and they just kind of had nowhere to go. We watched uh, da uh, David Washington check up, and then um, sorry here, and then uh, was it Dylan Joe or Dylan Rowe check up as well, trying to back up, but it just wasn't enough time, just a half second too late. We are still not sure. NASCAR has not given us a word. No Gulf Motorsports officials have not given us a word. I don't see this thing going green, but if it does, we'll have a one-lap shootout. I'm hoping it goes back green, don't get me wrong, but we'll just have to wait and see in the closing laps. But Andy Carpenter's sitting in the catbird seat. I have to see if the lights go off this time by. If they do, that means we will have a one-lap shootout. If not, we will end it under caution. So we're just sitting up here in the booth right next to the window looking to see what the flag man's going to do. Who would have thought that all eyes would be on the pace car at this point in time right now? Yeah. All, I, all eyes are on the guy in the front stretch there pushing the sheet metal down to the apron. <laughs> yeah, trying to hurry up and get it off the track. I have to see. I'm hoping this race goes green. <laughs> We're almost basically calling the pace car coming down the down the front straightaway. Pace car coming to the line. Is it going to turn its lights off? Does he turn its lights off? Come on, oh, turn your turn lights off. off pace turn them off. And the lights are still on on the iRacing.com Ford Mustang pace car. So that means we're going to finish this one under caution. It's two to go in the race right now. Uh, well, Andy Carpenter. Like you said, Andy, he was sitting in a good spot. He is going to uh, win this baby here at Daytona International Speedway. Dylan Jones. And we'll finish second, and Chad Osborne's going to round out the top three unless some, something happens and a meteor hits one of their cars or something, which I don't see happening <laughs> in the final lap and a half. <laughs> well, yeah, their power could go out like the Super Bowl, but other than that... The uh, power won't go out. I stopped being. It's all right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, these guys, uh, you know, a heck of a race. You hate to see them end under caution, but they all can't end under green, so... Uh, still, overall, it was a great race, and I, I was pretty excited with what I saw here to open the season for the Cup Series. Real good racing. We saw a mixture of tandem and pack racing. I was real excited. Good racing. Uh, the pack racing got excited, and uh, as well as the tandem. I love seeing the tandem, love seeing the pack, and I'm not even sure where we go next week after this. But we will be here tomorrow. We're not done tonight, though. No, we will be here tomorrow. Let me go ahead and get this out of the way. Tomorrow for the Noble Michelangelo Painting Truck Series, live from New Hampshire Motor Speedway. That should be a good race. But focus focuses tonight on this one. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and give out, or I'm going to say who I think had real bad luck tonight. Uh, first off, um, Holy Coons. I know he's sitting 7th right now. Had the bad luck earlier in the race, being caught up in that incident. And now he has worked his way back up to 2nd, but he was going for the lead. So I think if we would have went back green, that maybe uh, Holy Coons would have had something for these guys here in the final closing laps. But he's going to finish 7th. Another guy that had worked his way up to the front was Sean Medling. He's he's not going to finish well. Bruce Lawson, not going to finish well. Uh, Brian Lambert, uh, who was who another one? Rodney Kramer, Philip Willis, Harry Todd, David Washington going to finish 21st here uh, as we head out of Daytona. But white flag has been taken.
looks like the lights are off on the pace car, but I don't think that matters too much now. No lights are still on. But <laughs> Andy Carpenter is going to walk out of here as the winner. But let's take a breather. We'll watch the cars pass the line and be sure that Andy Carpenter walks out as the winner. And then we'll uh, go ahead and start making our way down and see if we can get some interviews. We'll put the top three. There you see it, Andy Carpenter crossing the line to take the checkered flag here at Daytona International Speedway. It is something to win at the mecca of motorsports racing, and he's going to take a victory lap. Probably, probably the most exciting two and a half miles he's going to drive. He comes out with the first win of the season. Congratulations to Andy Carpenter in the 96. We're all still scrambling down, around down in here, down pit road. Justin's following me with a pop circle for some reason. But we're trying to get you to the top. We're trying to get the top three interviews here. We're going to see if Andy Carpenter is going to burn them down for us down the front straightaway. Andy, uh, have you caught up with third place winner winner and dark horse of the race, Chad Osborne? I have caught up with Chad Osborne and Chad, man, what a heck of a run, finishing third, able to dodge some wrecks, and uh, Chad, I'd got to be happy with a uh, third place finish to open the season here. Uh, yeah, I was excited to run that race, it was a great time, I'd like to say thanks to all my sponsors, Rockstar, my cousin Scott Kimball, my uh, nephew Tyler Kimball, mom and Jim up in Colorado watching, but yeah, it was a good race, uh, survived that lap uh, 39 caution there and uh, just made it to third, I was having fun. Yeah, it's definitely a crapshoot when you come to a track like Daytona or Talladega, but uh, we, we talked about it all race long, the three wide was... You know, it, it, it'll work here, but, man, it's real touchy and real. These cars get real loose when they're uh, three wide on each other. Isn't that right? Yeah, it was a handful and uh, a lot of good drivers in here getting used to some of the new guys that joined up this year. But uh, thanks to Noble Motorsports for putting this all on. And, uh, again, can't get it done without my uh, crew chief, Tyler Kimball. He's the man. So thanks again, guys. Yeah, no problem. And thank you, Chad, and uh, heck of a run. But, uh Zane, that's our third place finisher, and I think you caught up with uh, Dylan C. Jones there, right? I've caught up with Dylan C. Jones. He spun the car around down pit road looking the wrong way. He's having a great time. He finished second tonight. Dylan, great run. How do you feel? You finished second but, uh, behind uh, Andy Carpenter. Feels good. We had a good qualifying run and just kept it up front there, kept it clean. Yeah, absolutely right. We watched you all race. You could push. You could put. You'd be pushed. Um, where did you feel the most comfortable during that run the whole night? 
I, I like pushing more than uh, being pushed, so just uh, stay behind whoever I can find and push them to the front if I can. If it didn't go to caution, do you think you had something for Andy Carpenter at the end of being victory lane tonight? Yes, I do. I think we could have probably got him. I was going to push him out there to a big lead, but couldn't do it. All right. Well, that's our second place finisher, Dylan C. Jones. Do you have anybody you want to thank for this second place finish? Just everyone at Noble for uh, putting this all on. All right. And I think Ben is soaked in champagne once again down on P uh, Victory Lane with Andy Carpenter. Ben, you got us down there? I got you, and actually they're spraying Gatorade tonight for some reason. I'm, I'm kind of disappointed about that. Uh, anyways, Andy, man, you you had that car in some scary situations, but you pulled it out. Sum up your race in, oh, about 15 words or so. Man, I never would have thought it would have happened. I was trying to stay in the back and avoid all these cautions and trying to make it on fuel, and I finally got tagged up with David Washington and started moving up to the front and just tried making my way. Andy, uh, you had the car and the position at the end right there. If we would have had a one-lap shootout to finish this thing off, would that rear bumper have gotten a little bit more wider than it had been the whole race? And I figure I, if it would have been a one-lap shootout, I know they would have trampled me. All right, Andy. Well, you were in the you were in the, you were you were in the spot when it counted when the caution came out. Didn't go fully green to the end, but you were in the spot. You got the win. Who got you here tonight? I'd have to give it to Dave Washington and just all the noble. All right, sounds great. Andy Carpenter down here in Pit Road. Man, guys, uh, Andy, it is it is a good race here tonight at Daytona. It was. Unfortunately, the end of the caution for everybody watching at home, but still a heck of a heck of a race, a lot of action, uh, a lot of drama, and a great way to start the season here at Daytona and uh, as we move on to next week. Absolutely right, and amazing race we saw tonight. We saw the tandem. We saw the pack drafting. I, I can't wait for next week. This season's kicking off to be an epic, legendary season. Um, I, Daytona may have finished under a caution, but that is not a precursor to what this season's going to show us at the end here. We still have nine races to go. First one is down, and for some, didn't end up like they wanted, but for many, like Andy Carpenter... And a bunch of other guys that finished up in the front. It went very well here at Daytona International Speedway. Pretty much all we have for for the night. We will catch you guys tomorrow on Noble TV for the Michelangelo Painting Truck Series live from New Hampshire Motor Speedway. But for Justin Munsell, Matt Weisbrot, Andy Kessler, Zane Lovett, I'm Ben Kilcrease. Thanks to Noble Motorsports, and we apologize for the technical difficulties earlier on, but we'll see you next time here on Noble TV.